Hello, Ivy here. This week's podcast and accompanying article is entitled Separation Cycle of Abuse. An introduction. The original aim of this podcast was to explore a variety of research papers on patterns and trends of abuse, which continues when an abused person manages to escape from their abuser. Abuser being an ex-partner or an abusive family who continue to try and exert control over the life of the relative who has escaped. This is all now grouped under legislation relating to coercive control. We have covered this topic a few times in the life of this channel and in particular have highlighted the work and quotes from the work of Dr Evan Stark and Laura Richards. I will list their summary bio later in the podcast and the article. Coercive control appears several times on this channel, as many of you know, in previous podcasts and articles. I decided to add this new section to the audio. The article will be amended shortly because of recent developments regarding the depravity of Royal Rota and the elements of UK journalism, in once again targeting the Sussex children. In my opinion, it crossed the line, and as a result, it has triggered a chain reaction of communications and a call to action from anyone who feels moved to contact the people I will name shortly and ask them to get involved now. All the ones I will name are a selection of people on the Sussex Global UK mailing list. This selection of names are in a position to make this high profile and with all the venomous labels and activity pointed at the Sussex children, including activity which led to a miscarriage for the Sussexes, I did a podcast on how disgraceful and disgusting the articles by Royal Rota were at that time. And the comment sections of those UK newspapers contained, well, what it contained about the loss of a baby was vile to read. I felt those emotions to my core. Having experienced such a loss many years ago. The trauma remains with you, and articles like those that particular November were so cruel. And it was obvious that they did not consider Megan or her lost baby as humans warranting due respect. And that lack of respect and humanity is still in evidence today with Archie and Lilibet. Neither the UK monarchy or its mouthpieces in the tabloid press consider the Sussex children as anything but fair game for their coercive control that they wish to have over the whole Sussex family, Harry in particular. This is just another method to hurt the couple, with the view that Harry will toe the line and provide the glitter to wrap around the detritus that is known as UK monarchy for the coronation in front of the globe. I have no doubt that Harry will be villainised and be the whipping boy for the royals should he attend. Equally, he will be the whipping boy if he does not. Not least because UK monarchy always have fragile egos and anything that happens that they do not feel comfortable with, they always look for someone to blame. Never any inward introspection in typical narcissistic style. There is an old saying that a turd is still a turd even when wrapped in glitter. The latest so-called joke 
and much laughter ensued with the four media folk, was well below the mark. And I personally felt like I needed to take action, even though it was not my child. I am 100% certain that none of the Royal Rota would ever make such jokes about any of the other royal children, even those who are so far down the list of succession that they are unknown to the general public. But the children of colour, once again, are seen as acceptable fodder, and would be every day if they returned to live in the corridors on that disgusting plantation behind Gilded Gates. No way will that be happening. So, as a black woman, and also one who suffered the loss of a baby, and the trauma which still remains, as if it had happened recently, this latest act of cruelty has triggered something in me. Before I leave this planet, there will be some kind of movement with international, within international legal corridors that begins the process to hold those responsible for coercive control activities to account. The fact that Robert Jobson found it amusing to mention what he would love to do on the balcony with the named Sussex child and the speed in which the other three spawn of Satan burst into laughter over shows and proves how low you are all prepared to go to earn your few pennies by vilifying and wishing death-defying activities on a three-year-old. At least two of you, I know, are parents, and that makes you lower than Satan's toenail. The short video I saw on social media and the photo that the four of you posed for at the end shows how much the begging bowl must be empty these days. The fact that you wish to fall on your sword for the higher-ups is your choice, but my call to action will be to elected officials, former elected officials and experts in the coercive control field, all of whom have been contacted by the volunteers and myself about this campaign and also high profile people who have stepped up and made efforts to show support for the Sussexes, such as Tyler Perry and investigative writers who I won't name here for obvious reasons, but you know who you are. I will name them and I will also ask listeners and viewers to contact you all too because now, almost two years of gathering data and knocking on doors, I have reached my limit of being polite. Time to start some good trouble. If you know, you know. As a note to that, I am not going to name the organisations, large and small, as there are, they are busy being advocates for those who have limited resources to seek legal redress. We have spent almost 100 episodes looking at the various types of abuse aimed at and delivered to and carried out on Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, since 2016, when their relationship became public. And the titles came into effect upon their marriage in 2019. The abuse has continued to this present day and is continuing across continents. This podcast channel does not focus on the day-to-day -day drama around Meghan and Harry, created by the monarchy via their mouthpieces in the media to distract from activity elsewhere, with the aim to bring Harry back into the UK and to accept his role as the whipping boy. We have covered the origins of that role in earlier podcasts. 
The fragile egos of those high in the line of succession, along with the monarch himself, cannot bear a strong, intelligent female who knows her worth. This channel has been monitoring, documenting and tracking trends and patterns in the behaviour, and not least the hate-inciting business model that has developed on social media platforms, and those who profit from the contents of the hate-filled rhetoric. The channel explores who benefits from such activity, and who will be harmed by the said activity along with those responsible. Throwing the missiles and then hiding their hands behind their backs. For the past few years that collection of information has been map, mapped to breaches in the law, in particular various aspects of human rights legislation. Podcasts have been published explaining the treatment of Harry and Meghan, articles published to accompany each podcast, and a selection of reference sources listed for each and every podcast backing up what has been stated. The things I state are all backed up with evidence and further backed up by research papers and or proof of who said what in the media, along with the frequency in which so many like to spout their bile and venom, and do so thinking they are protected by those who commissioned this activity in the first place, under the guise of the so-called invisible contract. The trends and patterns formed over time and now, in the final stages of this whole set of information, certain names and institutions run like golden threads throughout the whole lot. For the past 18 months or so, a wonderful group of people, based in various locations around the globe, have been volunteering their services to assist me in the gathering of data. All lead busy lives, and still they set aside time to work on this project, soon to be a publication next year. In the SGUK podcast channel, we have covered various forms of abusive activity delivered by groups and individuals, all done with the aim of destroying the Sussexes, Megan in particular. The depth to which those responsible are prepared to go believing that they have immunity, is based on a false premise. And they will find out in due course that the majority of them involved in this abusive activity are not high enough in the pecking order to be protected when the international legal advocates get involved. If it is the last thing that I do, I will ensure that the key people who have played a part in trying to destroy the Sussex family are held to account. Trust me when I say a press badge will not provide protection. We almost lost Megan and her unborn child as a direct result of psychological abusive tactics and behaviour. All of you abusers drove Megan to have suicidal ideations. Even when you were informed of this by Royal Human Resources, who clearly have no concept or respect for data protection laws, you doubled your efforts. Receipts exist for all of the above, by the way. The arrogance in which media personnel in particular, pose for photos and speak in front of camera with venom, delivering your harassment in a variety of ways that you believe are clever and fine to do. You will discover in the future that nothing could be further from the truth. In order to save the family from further harm, 
and possibly a repeat of the Diana outcome, Harry removed his family from the UK and moved to another continent. If anything, the abuse continued with a different face. The coercive control that has been in play ever since Meghan arrived in the UK and continues to this day, even though she has left the UK, if you remember, some of you made it your duty to tell her to leave the UK every single day in front of camera. And when she left, you continued. Evidence. 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 Coercive control legislation not only covers partners and ex-partners, it also covers whole families and their abusive activity, including abuse by family members on members who have moved away. This same area of legislation also applies to abusive activity to someone outside of the country of the abuser or their target who lives in another country. In this situation, we are talking about a family who live on another continent who still continue to receive abuse delivered by and commissioned by UK based people and entities. This is not acceptable. The names of the people I am asking those who are moved to do something, then I kindly implore you to make contact with the following people. President J. Biden via the White House website. Vice President K. Harris via the White House website. Antony Blinken, US Secretary of State via Ask Public Affairs at state.gov. Barack and Michelle Obama of the Obama Foundation via their website on barackobama.com. Governor Gavin Newsom, email via the website govapps.govca.gov forward slash gov four zero M A I L forward forward slash sorry not forward zero not to worry all of these will be on slides in the podcast and also in the article. Senator Susan Rubio email via website and that's listed on here. I'm not going to go through all the forward slash and things again, but it will be on a slide I said and in the article. Dr. Evan Stark via website evanstark.weebly.com Laura Richards website thelaurarichards.com email laura at laurarichards.co.uk again I said all of these will be in the article and on the slide so you don't have to worry whether or not you've got all the details down now. Tyler Perry anywhere you can reach him because I have tried so many published email addresses and they are either not in existence or over quota or no longer active. The man is an angel walking this earth. I really would like him on board in any way, but there are not enough hours to keep all of my plates balancing to try and find an active business email address. Now, with this latest evil from the UK, it is time to get reinforcements. A bullet point to um, follow on from those names that were listed. On September the 29th, 2020, the governor and senator of the state of California got a piece of legislation approved in relation to coercive control relative to residents of the state of California. In this case, we are talking about Gavin Newsom and Susan Rubio, that I mentioned earlier. 
I have tried numerous occasions to make contact with both of these elected officials, who did such stellar work on the Coercive Control Bill to become legislation in California, and who I wanted a conversation with about this campaign. But your electronic systems only seems to accept inquiries of information about the abuse of a California resident if the person reporting the information also resides in California. Whilst that may account for the majority, you are not taking into account the use of technology to continue coercive control activity by an abuser or abusers in one country towards a target who resides in another country. In this case, the Sussex family reside in your state and have been abused for six years and counting. And since 2020, the family have been resident in California. Nothing was done about the abuse documented in the three years that Meghan was in the UK. And now that they are back on USA soil, the same powerful forces are continuing the co coercive control abuse in full view by people based in the UK. Your system as it stands does not allow anyone who resides outside of California to report it. How then can your bill protect the Sussexes who are your residents when someone like myself cannot report their situation. I also ask the President why the three years of abuse towards Meghan, a USA citizen, was on UK soil and was never addressed and continues not to be addressed now that she is back on USA soil. Enough is enough. It's a phrase I'm using a lot today. There will be no repeat of Diana and the Sussex children and their parents must be safe at all times, protected by USA law. Whilst I'm on this topic, I'm going to add the following news networks to the list of people that I'm asking anyone who's listening or watching this video and if they feel so moved to send an email or two. So please contact at GMA, at ABC, at Today Show, at CNN, in any way or ways you find the most convenient. Those particular handles were for the American News Networks on Twitter. You can contact them by any method that you wish, by any address that you wish. That's just a starting point for you. That's their Twitter accounts. Another note, let us not forget that the next evil soul in line to wear the hat of stolen jewels and sit on a plastic chair of colonial days and memories, if the monarchy still exists in years to come, has publicly once again expressed his performative duty to declare war on racist slurs in the field of sports, including racist slurs against children. So, as per usual, performing with the cameras there, all looks good, good sound bites in the paper. Actually, it's all trash, it means nothing. Funny that in the real world, he does not even acknowledge the existence of his nephew and niece because they are not the right shade and has not come out and said anything about this latest supposed joke about hanging Archie over the balcony at Buckingham Palace. No matter the words used, that was the intention. No surprises there at all. But time is up now and this movement is going to be on the abuser's heels. Just because UK law is like a game of Monopoly does not mean that international law is going to continue to allow abuse across continents 
just because of the birth canal from where the, the abusers emerged. Now, to get back to my original audio, which I'm splicing the two pieces together, I'll pass it off to shorten it at the end, otherwise it'll be like two podcasts in one. But still, back to the original audio. In the last two years, the Sussex children have been targeted more than ever. Initially, it began with Archie being threatened before he was even born, and it has continued. Previous podcasts have covered how Archie was compared to a chimpanzee, and the abusers found that amusing. And the deliverer of that particular piece of trash was sacked and then re-employed within a week. It is so in keeping with the UK that it has become a trash can of a country. A country who bows down to people with wealth and ignores working class people who have to, who have to choose between eating or providing heat in their homes. The vulnerable suffer in the UK and those on the brink of falling into poverty have been convinced to believe that it is immigrants, people of colour in particular, that are the cause. So, while the rich drink from the colonised gravy train, the working classes are fighting each other. The result of this is that little attention is being paid to the top societal groups and how they are operating and benefiting from this activity among the less well-off. The situation with Harry and Meghan used to be ignored by the majority of working class people because it was considered nothing more than rich people fighting. The perception was that because Meghan was rich, she can get out of her situation whenever she wants. And likewise, Harry is not poor, so he can leave whenever he wants. What the abusers have now achieved is to alert working and middle class people to the fact that they have been duped. What is happening to Meghan and Harry can and does happen to people outside of those gilded gates. Most of them do not have the resources to take on the media industry, who act as the abusers on behalf of UK monarchy and or aristocracy. Some of those earlier targets are no longer with us, and many others are still suffering the mental health issues created by a cruel, vindictive minority of people and carried out via their partners in the invisible contract, printed and televised. The separation cycle of abuse has developed by tracking behaviours of abusers over partners or family members who have moved away from an abusive and toxic environment. The trends and patterns have led to this pictorial layout of the various stages of behaviour towards targets. Some of them are slightly different in terms of how the content is displayed, but the essence is the same running through all of them. I have put on one slide, well in fact two slides so that you can see the finer details on it, um, of one particular model. In the article there are three models that I have shown in full and in the reference sources there are about another half a dozen that I have listed and, and within those if you access those particular websites they also refer to others in their reference sources. So there are plenty of them around, but you will soon see the similarities with all of them. Very, very useful indeed. And it's good to see that it doesn't only just look at, when I say it, I'm talking about research, people in the middle of um, an abusive home environment. It is now tracking and putting together um, academic models for people to see what goes on when you leave it doesn't just all suddenly become roses there are a number of stages and things that happen to so many people that they've now become a trend and a pattern so hopefully that will be of interest and whether or not it's anyone that you know 
that's in that situation, it's information I think that is worthy of being stored just in case. The apparent indifference that Wanaki and the media in the UK told us every day, missing the main point that every day they were still talking about the people that they claimed that they were indifferent to and that they were irrelevant. Every day in the UK press and on TV, such as were told to leave the country, go back home to the USA. Panel of non-entities who claim to be expert, who in reality are resurrecting their failed careers or careers that most people have never heard of over the last 30 years. These clowns discuss and run polls on why the Sussexes should leave, particularly Meghan. Rarely a day goes by where this abusive behaviour did not take place, and the tabloid publications are off the scale with their race incitement. Because, believe it or not, even though they left in 2020, still, every day, every single day, there are articles and pieces on the TV and every news programme and certainly every morning programme has something about the Sussexes. None of it positive. Not least because they very, very rarely invite people who support the Sussexes. And if they do come on in error and they soon hear that they are supporters of the Sussexes, they're never invited back because that does not fit with the invisible contract that has been agreed. As I said, it's a daily occurrence and it is inciting hatred, race hatred. I will cover this more in, later in this podcast and some other ones coming up in the next few weeks. But needless to say, the official line coming out from the palaces via their mouthpieces in the media is that the British royal family is everything and that the Sussexes should know their place. Meghan was even told to be 50% of herself and to be less visible because she cannot and must not outshine the heirs to the throne and their consorts in waiting. Now the Queen has moved on and we have a new king and a new female at the helm. We have a new Prince of Wales and an established female at the helm who once again is coming into her own or who has found her voice or who will be the saviour of the monarchy again. This has been around the twelfth time that any and all of those claims have been made. To date, there has been no proof of that. It seems that the established female at the helm has yet to produce a rabbit out of the magic hat. Instead, we have speeches written by others explaining what the rabbit will look like when it pops out of the hat. And all will be well in the world. The established female at the helm has difficulty reading the big words on the cards, let alone know what they mean. It is clear most people would be able to outshine this protected individual, but someone else who can read and write, and write speeches at that, can then deliver information on planning and deciding aims and objectives of a project, show the results achieved, and how the project group is now sustainable with limited input from experts. A portfolio of data available to confirm the outputs and outcomes, and also to take questions on any aspect of that project without notes. This family thought that by chasing the Sussexes out of the country, it would make the others have all the spotlight and everything would be fine in their world. You all forgot that the spotlight reveals everything and the vacant space where there should be data 
and information are still vacant. So you have continued to distract from all of that with unnecessary abusive tactics and the behaviour from a family member who is no longer part of the family business and who you all wanted the person and his wife to go away. Again, it is on record in several places of multiple times where media personnel wanted to see Megan broken in spirit and there was no compassion or assistance provided when she asked for medical help. Royal Human Resources chose to be indifferent at a time when there was a legal duty to offer assistance. Not for the first time, this family behind the Gilded Gates and their staff all felt and still feel immune from the laws of the land. I am confident that some people are going to be in for a surprise and a few harsh lessons. It could not happen to more deserving people. I say that with my non-legal brain. It is yet another conclusion I have reached, but we shall all see in due course whether I am right or not. Harry and Meghan were told that the public and its media own Harry and Meghan. Again, I will remind listeners and viewers about that line of attempted justification used for years, along with UK taxpayers are entitled to know everything about the royals because they do in fact own them. And that includes details of pregnancies and choice of hospital, medical professionals involved, and details of the labour and timing of most contractions, etc. One presenter on daytime TV even went as far as stating publicly, we own her womb. And this was talking about Meghan. Harry announced in January 2020, the 8th of January in fact, that he and Meghan were stepping back from senior royal duties and that they would be leaving the UK and would become self-financing. All the people, and I mean all those who crawled from under their stones or who dusted off their sackcloth and ashes of their careers and saw the opportunity to revive the said careers by inciting and selling hate took hold. Now, the three years of inciting hate from within the UK public and societal groups, many of whom found it to be very lucrative indeed, including the social media platforms that hosted them, hosted the majority of these hate activities, suddenly changed the line of attack. The hyperventilating that royal reporters experienced, one in particular doing so on camera in a live news broadcast, remains one of my favourite pieces of television. You could see the panic in his eyes of the huge reduction in income and the major impact it would have on all of the royal reporters' personal lives. My mind suggests that we will see that look and hyperventilating a few times in the coming months and years from media people printed and televised. Karma is going to be busy. True to form, none of these abusers of Meghan and Harry saw themselves as being the cause and the weapon used against them. The flaming gun that they pointed at this couple and their associates every single day was now being held by their prey and pointing at the abusers. The announcement became a new chapter in the prey holding the weapon and standing tall and letting the hunters know the game was about to change. Warning shots were fired 
in 2018, the Oceanic Tour, when the Sussexes announced that they were about to embark on legal action against the UK tabloid industry over their behaviour and methods of gathering evidence. The announcement after the South Africa tour that the Sussexes were going to step back from senior royal duties and live abroad for most of the time was again made by Harry. But yet, just like in 2018, most things printed, whether or not Harry had been spokesperson, the tabloids ran with stories that Meghan was behind it and now was taking the UK's favourite prince away. All of it was blamed on Meghan. That pattern has continued for six years and is ongoing. I'll touch upon what that means for the British royal family and its media moving forward and the legal implications for the monarchy. Customary practice in inverted commas may not be enough to save certain people from scrutiny. I say that with my non-legal brain. That phrase came into being in 1911 when one monarch avoided action under the law by a convoluted process wrapped up in a nice sound phrase of customary practice. The fact that everyone since has turned a blind eye to things in the monarchy does not mean it will remain that way. We shall see. The indifference claimed about this couple has never been evident here in the UK and the behaviour over the last six years proves it has been anything but indifferent by the British royal family and pals. When it comes to this couple, at all times this coordinated hate campaign has only shown concern for the monarchy and the people within it and for the media personnel themselves about the reducing levels of income being experienced by them towards their prey. Had the tables turned when the prey took the gun and removed the bullets and stood there proud under their lights and let you all know that the people who you called irrelevant for years are far from that. You all stay up at night waiting for news items to appear from abroad so that you can continue to write your venomous articles and earn more money from each article than when you write about the royal family you all claim to support. Those articles show intent and volume and content and methods of activity. The receipts alone for six years of stories in each tabloid, each and every day, and the links to targeted activity in a variety of places provides an abundance of proof and distribution and motive. The British royal family are supposedly advocates and champions for improvement in mental health facilities in the UK. Some of those senior royal family members are patrons of mental health charities. And yet, when the announcement was made by Prince Harry about stepping back, all of the above groups were more concerned about their plight and showed zero regard for the state of mental health of the Sussexes, which they had caused as part of their invisible contract. Speaks volumes and a common theme throughout the royal family and its treatment of anyone who does not toe the line and shows signs of independent thought. No amendment of any articles over this six years can save them now. Receipts exist. The trend and pattern of the content has been proven already. Breaches under the law have also been captured. So continue as you are doing, and you are just building a stronger case for your victims. And a true picture of the hate inciting business model that you have rolled out to others to be the face of hatred if anything blows up in the news. But, trust me, that won't work in this situation. I will elaborate more in future podcasts, but in certain areas I will be saying nothing at all. Legal professionals can do that. If and when required. 
I am just drawing conclusions from evidence I have gathered over the years and cross-matched with the law from a non-legal thought process. I'll quickly go through a few headings. I'm not going to go into detail with it. It's all in the article, but just so that you know. Manipulative anger. Anger is a tool used to gain and maintain control over the targets. Defaming the survivor. Narcissistic partner or family members try to isolate you in your new life away from them. They try to destroy any credibility in your new circle and any business opportunities coming your way. They will work hard to devalue your contribution to it. Some abusers will try to destroy your reputation in order to deter anyone new trying to form a business partnership with you. So even if they cannot harm current contracts and working relationships, they will aim their activity at the potential business clients. Or powerful friends waiting in the wings to join the target in some kind of collaboration. In doing so, it strengthens the new life away from the abuser where one lived previously. What is coercive control? Those of you who have been with me on this channel from the start will know that I have championed a number of people in respect of coercive control. And the two I speak and write about the most are Dr. Evan Stark and Laura Richards. I cannot speak highly enough about these experts in this field. And there was no doubt that I wanted them to be involved in this campaign in any small way possible, perhaps liaising with the people I have named above in respect of the calls to action. This issue is wider than Harry and Meghan, but what Harry and Meghan's experience of being on the receiving end of a very powerful machine comprising of very powerful individuals can help shed light on a topic which could help so many people and groups and advocates. If this campaign can shed light on a number of groups trying to advocate for a number of people on a global scale and in any way can reflect systems and processes around international law bodies to reflect the growing abuse online to both children and adults, then this campaign will have been successful in starting conversations. The ripple effect of the harm that on those targeted by psychological abuse in this way, in terms of resources of a range of agencies who specialised in trying to help victims and targets of abusive activity and who do not have the resources to fight it on any legal platform. The conversations can lead to real change, not just rhetoric. Just a few lines on each of those two experts that I referred to a few minutes ago. There is so much on their websites and in any way that you look up their names, you will see that their achievements are just huge. So Dr. Evan Stark is a sociologist, forensic social worker, a widely published author and an award winning researcher with an international reputation for his innovative work on the legal, policy and health dimensions of interpersonal violence, including its effects on children. Dr. Stark's book, Coercive Control, The Entrapment of Women in Personal Life, published Oxford 2007, was named the outstanding book in the social sciences by the American Publishers Association and recipient of the Choice Award American Library Association for Outstanding Academic Book Reviewed in 2008. Coercive Control became available as an audiobook in 2018. Evans' work on coercive control has helped shape policies. Laura Richards. After a decade of analysing violent crime at New Scotland Yard, Laura became the violence advisor to the National Police Chiefs Council. Trained by world leaders at the Behavioural Analysis Unit, National Centre for the Analysis of Violent Crime at the FBI and New Scotland Yard, 
Laura has applied her psychology degrees to analyse violent crime from a behavioural and preventative perspective. Laura has been the architect of law reform to better protect victims on eight occasions as well giving evidence in Connecticut, USA and Queensland, Australia, both leading to successful outcomes regarding coercive control law reform. A quote from Laura's website about coercive control. Coercive control is a strategic pattern of behaviour designed to exploit, control, create dependency and dominate. The victim's everyday existence in micromanaged and her space for action as well as potential as a human being is limited and controlled by the abuser. A number of feminist psychologists in the 1970s identify the domestic abuse victims that they worked with as living like hostages and coined the term coercive control. And to bring this podcast to a close, no matter which post-separation type of wheel you look at, at the heart of all of them are the following. Alienation, abusive parenting, discarding, isolation, harassment and stalking, legal abuse, for example, dragging the one who escaped through a long and often unnecessary legal process, regardless of the outcome. It is the volume of articles that can be written in that period and the increased advertising revenue gained during that period zero concerns about the impact on the person who left, the response will be come back and be our doormat and it will be reduced activity against you. Financial abuse. This backfired because Harry and Meghan began to earn vast sums of money really quickly and what is more continue to do so. It will not be long before they are billionaires The control that the UK monarchy thinks it has is an illusion. The harm that they are doing and continue to do could very well lead to a tragedy. Just know, the UK, never mind the monarchy, could never come back from such an event. It is about time common sense prevailed and to lose the slave mentality. I will leave this podcast topic there for now. The podcast is longer due to the additional audio added, but I think it was necessary. The call to action has been triggered by one too many stunts that the invisible contract crew believe that they can pull and sit around laughing about and using such phrases like the one used not too long ago, referring to Harry coming back one day without Meghan and someone else laughing and saying it would be good for him to come back, but he would never do it whilst, and I quote, there is breath in her body. End of quote. Absolute disgrace, yet another example of absolute disgrace. The same person who referred to Archie as frog spawn before he was born. This call to action may not be the last. In fact, I'd very much doubt it will be the last. This one is necessary at this time because of the depravity of those who think so much of themselves and anyone else is dehumanised from the start. So they feel comfortable stating these things in print and on camera. You cannot keep doing these things for years and expect not to be held to account by the law. The clock is ticking. Such as Global UK campaigns about to get underway. Enough is enough. And I repeat, it's time to create some good trouble. That's it for this week. So, bye from me. Bye from Ivy. Bye. (laughs) 